Sea to Summit Talos TR2 tent review. We've had this backpacking tent now for about two years. We've got lots of experience with it. I'm gonna give you my thoughts and opinions on the tent and let you know, is it right for you and should you buy it? When you purchase the tent, this is how it comes. It's got this little divvy sack. So you've got the rain fly and the inner and the poles and the pegs and it comes together in this little package, which is kind of cool. You can disconnect it and split up the load. So one person can take the rain fly and one person can take the inner. It's got DAC aluminum poles and they're all shot quartered together. So it's all one piece, which is kind of handy. They're quite lightweight, 8.5 diameter. So they're pretty flimsy. They're not gonna hold up to much wind. Also they're color coded, so you know which ends go where. It's quite a handy feature. So this is the tent set up on the poles, as you can see. Fully freestanding, so you can pick it up and move it around. Not really a feature that I use, but it's kind of nice to have it. The poles clip into these little rivets, just like that. And each corner of the inner has a little tensioner like that, which is quite nice. So you can tension out the inner, or also reposition your stake if you've got rocks in the way or not. So that's quite a nice feature to have. This tent's got quite a unique feature. It's this top pole. They call it the tension ridge. It gives you a very high ceiling and a big entrance way to get in and out of the tent. Probably the main differentiating feature of this tent versus other models is this tension ridge, which just allows heaps of internal volume and vertical walls on the inner of the tent. Above my head, heaps of room, can wave my arms around. So even for two people inside the tent, you can get changed and you've got ample room so you're not butting your head or your arms against each other. Also, because of this tension ridge, it makes the top high up, so it's very easy to get in and out of the tent, not having to crawl out. Nice feature. The head end of the tent is 134 centimeters wide, and the foot end tapers down to 110 centimeters, and the total length from head to foot is 215 centimeters. So plenty of room for a large pad and a smaller pad. There's two good sized internal pockets on either head end of the tent. So the way that the rain fly attaches to the inner is with this little C bracket clip thing. And that comes down and goes in and on like that. I find it fiddly and really annoying, but if it is windy, it can fall out. So I would say it's a negative feature, but it does work and it's fine. Tension's down on all corners, nice. The tent comes with eight stakes. Little aluminium ones like this, they're really lightweight and strong, high quality stakes. Usually tents come with shitty stakes and you throw them out, but I'm happy with these ones and I reckon they're good. On the corners of the vestibule, you've got line locks again, which is a really cool feature that I think all tents should have, so you can tension the fly down close or far away from the ground. So for ventilation, Cedar Summit's got this big top vent, which you can unzip or zip up, which allows airflow in and out of the tent. The Rain's a 15D ripstop nylon. It works really well and it's been waterproof. It's only got a 1,200 millimeter hydrostatic head, but we've had it in pretty decent rains and no leaking at all. I think in heavy winds and rain, you might have some problems with this tension ridge thing, but you can zip it up. The fly is all seam taped from the factory and it's done to a high quality, so no worries for leaking through the seam taping. The tent's got a bathtub style floor and the floor material is again a ripstop nylon which is a 20 denier material. The whole tent fully packed up with everything included weighs 1558 grams which is actually less than the stated weight on Cedar Summit's website. I tested this this morning on my own scale so that's pretty good lightweight tent. The tension ridge that Cedar Summit put on this tent gives the ability for the tent to have a huge internal volume and maintain a really light weight. And that's the best selling point for this tent, I think. It's just how light it is to how much space you get inside the tent. The vestibules are a great size, plenty of room to store gear for two people or cook if it's raining. Never had any issues with the space available in the vestibule. Lying down in the tent, you can see there's absolutely plenty of room for two people. I use this tent quite a bit by myself as a one person tent and it's like being in a palace. Something that we have had issues with in this tent is the fact that this tension ridge gets very close to the inner 
and when it's condensating and the cell nylon sags, rain fly can touch the inner mesh and it can cause condensation to drip into the tent. This has been a problem that we've experienced in cold weather. This tent's ability to sustain itself in winds is not great. So I'd say if you're buying this, don't expect a good tent for camping on the top. So it's really something that you would use if you're down in a campsite or in a sheltered spot in the trees. The tent does come with four bits of guy line, but they're pretty crap and the line locks don't work that well. So I've replaced them with my own and I don't really bring them to guy out the tent because if it's going to be that windy I won't bring this tent. The tent costs about 1000 New Zealand dollars and it comes in a two person or a three person and you can get a winter version of the tent which has a higher hydrostatic rating on the bathtub and instead of being all mesh it's got more fabric on the inner to help with cold weather. Value for money I think the tent's a pretty good option if you consider its competition which is probably stuff like the MSR Hubba Hubba or the Big Agnes Copper Spur. They're all about in the same price range, but the main difference, like I said earlier, is the fact that there's such large internal volume to the weight of the tent. Overall, who do I really think this tent's for? It's for people that want to camp in reasonably sheltered conditions, and I would say it's like a backpacking glamping tent. It's well engineered and it's got top quality materials and build quality. If you're in the market for something that's comfortable, spacious, but still lightweight, I think this is probably maybe the best option. Would I buy this tent again if it broke? To be honest, I probably would. I think it represents good value for its strength to cost to internal volume specs. Victoria's in the palace, look at all this space. You could have your kitchen, your bedroom, your pad, you could have a dog in here, all for 1.5-ish kilo. So that's a Cedar Summit Talos TR2 tent. Would I recommend it? Yes, but you have to be aware of its strengths and its weaknesses and not try to take it outside of its abilities. Overall, it's a good tent, good build quality, reasonable value for money, and it serves its purpose well. Cedar Summit have implemented this stupid system where you can clip the light bar onto the tent as a light diffuser and these little things at the head end of the tent for pockets. An absolutely stupid gimmicky system. I would give that a 0 out of 10. Cedar Summit Talos TR2 tent review. This is the first back tech... <laughs>